the red wolf is a distinct species. It's size-wise in between a gray wolf and a coyote, so it's in the middle. Uh, usually they range between like 45 and 80 pounds, and they look quite a bit different than, than gray wolves. Pointier facial features, they have less of a shaggy coat, and a reddish hue to their coat as well, and that's why they're called red wolves. So the scientific name for the gray wolf would be Canis lupus, red wolf is Canis rufus. It's kind of like our, our nation's wolf. Um, you know, they evolved here in the United States. It's really the only place they've ever lived here, you know, in North America. And uh, I think we should be proud, you know, it's exciting to have, to have our very own wolf and try to hopefully safeguard it so people can enjoy um, really accommodating this species for generations to come. Uh, as far northeast as uh, New York, uh, and as far south as Florida, and as far west as um, the eastern side of Texas. So that's basically their historic range. When scientists basically gathered the last, or located the last uh, wild red wolves uh, decades ago, they were all near the Gulf Coast. They've been pushed down uh, from here in the north, uh, down to really along the southern states. Well, basically, in 1980, uh, the red wolf was declared biologically extinct, and what that means is they're extinct in the wild. Only 14 red wolves uh, lived in captivity among zoos. Uh, these were really just the founding population now of all red wolves that are on Earth today. 2004, we're accepted in the red wolf species survival plan, and uh, we actually received our very first pair of red wolves in December of 2004. And, uh, and it was very exciting for us um, just to be a part of this you know, recovery and to be able to marry what we're doing on the education side here at the Wolf Center with actual recovery. Uh, and also, since all people don't even know what the red wolf is, it's, it was pretty cool just to be able to, to show people and, and talk about it. Now the challenges of recovering a species with low diversity um, uh, is really trying to figure out how to grow the population um, have healthy pups that can then deliver healthy genetics to future generations. So basically every year uh, all the participants, all the organizations uh, and U.S. Fish and Wildlife and zoos, we all meet once a year uh, to discuss uh, recovery challenges. We, uh, we do a lot of matchmaking. We look at what wolf should be bred with what wolf. Uh, also uh, any husbandry issues they have and also just um, uh, just recovery initiatives in the wild. The other challenge is getting new new wolves out to the wild. The Red Wolf program employs a really just, I just think it's really neat, uh, way of getting uh, captive red wolves into the wild. They use a pup fostering method. So basically, um, in the dozens of uh, facilities like the Wolf Center that house these animals, um, you know, this year we, we uh, we had one breeding pair. And so we're really hoping that they would have pups. And if they did have pups, what we would have done is immediately gone in, count them, just see generally how healthy they look. And then we would have called the field biologist for US Fish and Wildlife down in North Carolina and say, listen, we had five pups born today. You know, what can you do for us? And then the field biologist will give us an idea if there are any red wolf pups born in the wild around that same time. And if that is the case, what is often done is a, an animal, is a few of the pups in captivity are taken from captivity between seven and 10 days old, flown or driven to the wild, uh, where they'll be inserted into a wild den where a family had their own pups. And then the pups in the, or the parents in the wild will embrace them and raise them as their own. For years, uh, one of the biggest challenges were just cars, traffic, you know, roads, actually with all wildlife tend to tend to be a pretty uh, a dangerous thing. Um, and also being mistaken for coyotes uh, has been an issue for a long time. Hunters thinking they're hunting coyotes, which is legal uh, many times of the year, um, and they shoot an endangered species instead. Red wolves eat people. No, they do not. Um, red wolves, uh, they eat um, normally in their natural habitats, going to be deer, uh, raccoon, nutria, um, small rodents, birds, um, so they don't, they don't really take down the, the bison or the, the musk ox or the elk that, that um, gray wolves do. They tend to have a smaller prey base, but a lot of deer as well. Um, but they're a keystone species and a predator that belongs on the landscape to keep everything in balance. 
One of the things that I, I like about Red Wolves, um, or I think is really cool about Red Wolves, is their voice. Um, they have a much different howl than uh, the Grey Wolf, and I especially love talking about this with kids. Um, because it just gives them a chance to just kind of cut loose and let it all out and try to do red wolf howl. And uh, the red wolf, they open their mouth really wide and they like yip and they rah, they scream at each other. Uh, and when you hear basically, you know, we have 22 wolves here at the Wolf Center right now. When you hear the howls kind of roll down the hills, you have these kind of these bass oh, of the gray wolf and then you have these like ah, it's kind of like the lead guitar um, and that's something I've always appreciated about the red wolf.